Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm going to do my first impressions <clears throat> of the Liang Ma Field Duty. Now, this is the carbon fiber bolster lock variant, and uh, you guys might remember me doing a full review on the Field Duty. And I did this on the full titanium version, which I'll get to in a little bit, but it's actually a completely different knife. Um, as a lefty, I basically see this as a separate model. Uh, even though it's still the Field Duty and one is carbon fiber and one is titanium, this bolster lock just changes the knife completely. So um, I will get to that. But first up, um, just to take a look at it and explain um, where I got it, I picked this up at Blade Show on day two. We stopped by and spoke to Liang Ma, uh, which was an absolute pleasure. Um, I've always had a good experience with him over social media and direct messaging, but um, meeting him in person was absolutely awesome. He's a cool dude. Uh, we got to check out his uh, new model. Uh, he had a couple new models out, actually. They're integral flippers with absolutely stunning materials. Uh, of course, produced by Riot, and um, we didn't pick any of those up just because they were flipper-only designs, um, so I, I just prefer a knife with multiple uh, opening methods, uh, specifically a hole or slot or something like that is preferred, um, unless there's some kind of, you know, uh, something really cool going on, then I might, you know, pick it up, uh, so yeah. Um, I first got to handle this knife in the shredded kind of carbon fiber or marbled carbon fiber because Kyle over at DTOM Knives and Gear, my brother, he has one and he swears by the thing. It's one of his favorite knives. Like it's a top three knife in his collection. Um, and when we got to the hotel at Blade Show, I got to handle that and I was instantly in love, instantly blown away. Um... And again, I had handled this knife before just in full titanium. And it, it's staggering how different it is. Um, and I immediately was like, man, I, I'm going to have to get one of these if Leong has some. And he did. So I bought one. Uh, they go for $450. Um, he gave me a little bit of a deal. I paid $400, um, which is still a good amount of money, guys. But you get titanium. You get carbon fiber, you get uh, ceramic ball in the clip, you get M390 steel, and it's a good amount of it. I believe it's a four inch blade with 3.75 inch cutting edge, something like that. Nice choil right here. Look at that pivot design by Leong. Um, this, tight, or this carbon fiber is finished absolutely perfectly. I really did like the marbled one, maybe a little better, but this has grown on me fast, the way it kind of shimmers. Um, it's definitely better than like the normal checkered pattern. Like this is Riot made as well, but I just think it's a little bit better than that, even though it is quite similar. Um, this seems to have more of like a top kind of shiny layer. Almost looks like it's um, a laminate of some sort and this is just absolutely uh stunning so anyway the carbon fibers finish really well of course the titanium is as well everything is rounded and chamfered um when we talk about pricing in knives um one of the things that i've learned over time is yes you can get a riot made carbon fiber and m390 just pretend this is m390 it came in that this is l max but same difference not same difference but you know what i'm saying you could get a knife with these materials um for 275 dollars this was right um belt satin on the grind uh very well done um but you'll see it's a very simple excuse me very simple design um, everything isn't like perfectly rounded, um, and chamfered down to perfection. Like, yes, it is very well done. I am not trying to say this is not a well done knife. Um, see the spine of the blade there. 
And then if you look at the fuel duty here, again, you'll see that marbled carbon fiber, or that carbon fiber, sorry, is so well done. These screws are round topped. There's that nice ceramic ball in the clip there. And what you'll notice is these edges right here, just so perfectly rounded and chamfered. Like, look at the finish on that. Um, and that backspacer with that kind of U cut out in it. Um, some people don't like this jimping right here. It hasn't bothered me one bit. Um, and then you have the clip screw, which guys, it's a reversible clip. Absolutely fantastic to see that. I had to bend it. So when you flip it from right to left, it will kind of be aimed over here and it looked kind of weird. So I just kind of like pushed it like this until it was where I wanted it and it just stayed. So it bent perfectly fine. Nothing's wrong with it. And if I ever need to flip it back, I just have to bend it a little bit. No big deal. Um, so I love that that was included because it's basically a lefty knife now. I carry it left-handed. It operates fantastically left-handed. Obviously, it disengages and closes right-handed. Um, but anyway, back to the design. Look at the pivot screw. Like, you can just see all these intricate details on this knife compared to that other one. And that's where that money goes. A little notch here where the blade drops in, perfectly centered. Um, look at the uh, finishing work on the spine here. It has this little, uh, this little divot right here and drops down. Um, also a, a, a belt satin on here. Uh, but I would argue it is finished to a higher grit than the... Um, f 5.5 here is um and that's going to go into the cost um you can see this one has that milky layer that it, i always talk about a chalky layer and this does not it's just finished to a higher grit um in my opinion that is um it, the swedge up here it just has more detail and that's where that money goes um you know, that's just how it is. Uh, and I absolutely think this is worth that $450 easy. Um, so anyway, that's, um, you know, kind of the overall knife there. It's fantastic. Now, the titanium one has a frame lock that you can see that goes all the way down. And you'll see that relief cut is right there. That's kind of like where, the, where, the, where it ends, where this line right here would end. And what that means is, as a lefty, if you put pressure on that lock bar anywhere, you seize it up. So, like, if I hold it up here and try to flick it, I can't get it out. I cannot flick it out because there's pressure putting that detent ball deeper into that lock, into the blade, into the hole in the blade, right? It's locking it up. But as soon as I go off of that, right, and I'm right, right here, bang, I can fire this out, right? Look at the closing action on this. Beep. Um, so what that does is it frees up this much room. I have this much extra room on this, on this side as a lefty to put my thumb compared to the frame lock version. It's just a completely different knife guys. Um, I had to hold it way down here and kind of uh, ride the clip because you know, normally the clips over here for a right handed knife. And I'd have to do this. This is how I had to flick it. And it would work. It wasn't terrible. Um, but you'll see I kind of land awkwardly in between the choil. Um, it's just not the greatest. And and that's kind of how I have to operate a lot of knives. Like if you look at the Evo 2.0. This is another good example for a lefty. Because of this clip. This giant ass clip covers a lot of that lock bar. So I end up on the clip here instead of the lock bar and I could fire it out. Um, but if I move up at all and I get on this lock bar, I got nothing. I can't get it out. And so she said, uh, I'm trying to get you an example. So here is the crawler from Arcane Design. It's another one. This one, again, nice long clip and this pivot collar covers the top of that lock bar. See, it covers this section of the lock bar. Um, but I have to ride down here at the bottom of the knife and put my thumb on that clip to get it to fire out. And for me, it works because that's kind of where I naturally want my hand after deployment. Um, but if I move up at all, uh, I got nothing. 
and it's just a big issue with knives. Now, there are examples. Sorry, now I'm going down a, a, a rabbit hole here. There are examples like this Medford where, for some reason, sorry, they just are able to design the knife where it doesn't have that lock bar pressure issue. And I don't know if that has something to do with this over travel stop here or what. But I don't have any of those issues uh, with that knife. It's a very rare thing, though. And you'll notice in my collection, I just don't have knives that that um, have that lock bar in a bad place for me to do a Spidey flick. So I can't really show you a bad example right now. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out because it's a game changer as a lefty. I can recommend this knife uh, so, to lefties uh, so much. Like, I love this knife. Uh, le being left-handed, it basically is left-handed to me, minus that lock, minus the frame like actually being on the right side. I know that sounds stupid, but I mean, look at this action. It's just, it's absolutely uh, drop shut past the detent. It is. It just needs to get boom. Um, you know, and if you're right-handed, of course, you get the guillotine drop, and then uh, the full drop. You can play the get up, get out of the way game. You know, it, it's just absolutely fantastic. I'm loving this knife so much. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm just rambling here, guys. Um, the sounds are phenomenal. Occasionally, it gives a nice ting. I don't know if you can hear it, but it sounds amazing. It's just absolutely fantastic. And it's a big knife, guys. Like, I can get a full grip from here down. You know, I get a full grip. And then I'm up on that jimping. It feels really good. This blade is easy to control. But then I can climb up here. And now, you know, I'm on that choil. I still have some jimping here. It has that classic Liang Ma razorback jimping. Um, it, it's just so good. And then, you know, the biggest thing with this knife, guys, is the, the hole. And the detent from Riot. It just is placed perfectly. The detent is dialed to perfection. Um, I just put pressure, pressure, bang, it flies out. I don't need to think twice. Um, this is what she said, but you just put your finger in that hole and flick, and it will fly. It is just one of the best actions um, on deployment and close that I have ever handled. I absolutely love this thing. It is quickly rising through the ranks up into the top five. And it is. It's in the top five in my collection. Uh, the ever-changing top five of my collection, guys. Um, you know, right now I could lay them out, you know, where I'm at. Holt Haptic is in there. The Evo is, uh, you know, probably the front of the line. Uh, these three are very close together. Um... The Slim Midi, of course, is in that. Uh, so I got four here, right? You know, um, this the F5.5 is in there. It's not number one. Uh, it is kind of getting pushed out, to be honest. Uh, but then I handle it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I love this thing. <laughs> right? Um, that's just how it is with knives. Uh, but I, I, I am slowly, you know... Um, in my head forming this top five and and this is probably it but the sumo is just making its way guys um uh, it is also creeping up there but i don't know what it would knock out uh it seems weird but maybe the f5 or the haptic i love the haptic um i don't know why this turned into a top five video but um man this thing is so perfect it really is. But being flipper only might be the only kind of negative for it. <laughs> it's just not as, like, ultimately fidgety for me. Even though I can do this. Uh, you know, play the get out of the way game. And I love it. Um, so, I don't know. It, it, top six, guys. All right? Anyway, I'm sorry. I don't know why I just did that. I'm giddy like a schoolgirl. Um, yeah, that's Sumo's boss. But yeah, guys, the uh, Liang Ma Field Duty is a fantastic knife. It's been around a while. Um, I don't think it gets enough love. It is just utterly fantastic. I did want to do size comparisons. So there you go. Um, Slim Midi right here. 
It's a big boy, guys. It is a big boy. Here is the Evo. I think these are both three and a half inch blades. Um, and you can see it's it's a bit bigger than both of those. Let me uh, compare these two here. Um, so you're looking at a, a hefty size knife. Um, it's not heavy though. Because of that carbon fiber on there, it's also much lighter than the um, titanium one. It's just so fantastic, guys. And there's not much milling in there. Uh, but that's on purpose because it really doesn't need to be lighter. If it was, it would feel weird. It is a very light knife, guys. I mean, this thing can't weigh more than four ounces. I, I, I venture to guess it's about four ounces. And if it's more than that, you know, it carries the pounds really well. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Uh, so it's just a, a, a great knife. I'm so happy that I picked this up from Leon. It was fantastic meeting him. And, uh, yeah, guys, that's it. That is the uh, Leong Ma Field Duty in carbon fiber with the bolster lock. That's why I'm reviewing it again. It's just a different knife, guys. It really is, at least to me. Uh, righties might not feel the same way, but as a lefty, this is completely different. Um, I already know some guys who picked this up um, because of the same reason. You know, they wanted the bolster lock because left-handed, it's just... It's a game changer. So um, I really appreciate you guys listening to me rant, rave, uh, just go off on tangents. I love you so much. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you later.